plane shifts around. Now, we, uh, we are EP Bird. We are known as the Coke and Mentos guys. Um, my name is Fritz. My name is Steven. And we are experts at doing stupid things. Yes. I, before all of this, I spent 20 years working as a professional juggler. Yes, but before this, I spent 20 years working as a trial lawyer. So, I think I win that one. I think you do. I think you do. Now, all of this started, all of this started by telling one person. We told, Stephen told one of his brothers, and it spread once we posted a video online. So thank you so much for coming out, supporting the maker community here in the Bay Area and all over the planet. It's a really wonderful thing to see. Now, if there is one thing, one thing that you take away from your time here at the EV Bird Coke and Mento show, if there's one thing you take away from Maker Fair, we hope that it is this. Try this at home. <laughs> you must do it yourself. So we'll show you the simplest way you can do this. The basic way to do this is so ridiculously simple, there's no one who has an excuse for not having done this at least once. All you need is a roll of Mentos, mint candies, you can also use the fruit ones, a piece of paper and a business card or a playing card, and a bottle of soda. You roll the paper up into a tube, just as Fritz is doing here, and he's going to place the card on the bottom of the tube, and then drop five or six Mentos into that tube, and the card will hold them on the bottom to keep them from falling out. And then place that entire assembly over the open mouth of a bottle. <clears throat> now the reason you do it like this is because if you try to put them in one at a time by hand, by the first or second Mentos, the soda starts to come out already and you can't get all five of them in. So this is a very simple way to get them all in at once. And when he pulls the card out, all those Mentos will drop in and we should get a nice little geyser that looks like this. Three, two, one, pull! And the most important thing is at the end of your geyser, always, arms up! Even if it's a terrible, pathetic little four-inch geyser, always celebrate anyway. Always armed up. Now, we can't use that paper tube method when we have 108 bottles like we do on stage. So we have a slightly different method. It's basically the same, it's just a little more complicated. We have a PVC pipe, a piece of PVC pipe on top of all of these bottles. Inside that, before the show, some of you actually helped us with this, there's already five Mentos loaded into those tubes. And instead of the playing card, we have a wire pin that goes across the bottom of the nozzle, so that when we pull the pin out, all the Mentos that are preloaded fall into the soda, and the same thing that happened over there happens, the reaction happens right there, and it shoots out the mouth of the bottle. <clears throat> now, we have a smaller hole there, so we get a nice, the, the geyser goes a little higher than it does when we, we have an open bottle. And that looks like, oh, the camera, you can get the camera if you're not careful. <laughs> looks like this, three, two, one, pull. Now we're talking. Arms up. Now, if you notice, there's a little, you can't see it anymore because it's covered in soda, but there's a little black stripe at the top of that nozzle. And that tells us what shape the hole is. That means to us there's a half inch hole in the top of that, uh, that nozzle, which makes the guys that look like you just saw. This one has an orange stripe, and that has three holes. And that looks like this. Three, two, one, pull. Arms up. Now you don't have to draw, drill round holes in the tops of your nozzles, you can make whatever shape you want. This one we just took a hacksaw, which is what we call a slot, and it makes a nice fan-shaped geyser. And that looks like this. Three, two, one, pull! Oh, they got stuck? There we go. Arms up! Now, there's one tricky part to building these kinds of nozzles yourselves, because we know, since you are makers, you are going to build these yourselves. Yes, indeed. Now, it took us a long time to find the right kind of glue, because you have two different kinds of plastics. You have, you have PVC and you have the plastic of the bottle cap. 
And it took, you know, we tried Gorilla Glue, we tried Super Glue, we tried all kinds of stuff. And we finally found the right thing, so we want to clue you guys in so you can do this yourself. What you need is some Scotch Weld uh, it's from 3M. 3M Scotch Weld DP8005 Structural Plastic Adhesive. Yeah, give it up for DP8005. Yes, now, if you, if you, yeah, there was someone, there was someone earlier who was like, wait, that was DP8, what, zero, oh, he was so close. Yeah. So if you do get home and you're like, wait, what, Scotch Weld DP8005, what? Just give, send us a message on Facebook, give us a, drop us an email, we will let you know because we want you to build these yourself. Now, because you're makers, you're not going to stop there. You can, of course, put anything you want on the tops of your nozzles. This is just a simple Home Depot lawn sprinkler, one of the simpler varieties. We have two of those in the show, but you guys can do whatever you want and don't stop with that simple sprinkler. So when you do put weird things and creative things on the tops of your nozzles, please send us pictures because we want to see them. Yes, indeed. Now, the biggest question we get asked is, what what does, what makes this work? How is it possibly uh, how is it possible that when you drop candy into soda you get this kind of explosive reaction? And you would think that it would be a chemical reaction. You would think it would be the ingredients of the candy and the ingredients of the soda, but primarily it's a physical reaction, a physical reaction called nucleation. And you can see nucleation in action if you just take your finger and put it in a cup of soda pop, you will see bubbles forming on the ridges of your finger. And what's happening is you've got all of this carbon dioxide, you've got all of this, all of this gas under pressure inside the liquid, saturated in the liquid, and it is looking to escape. And it will grab onto anything bumpy it can find, like the ridges of your finger or a scratch on the side of the glass, anything bumpy. So it turns out that the surface of Mentos mint candies are covered with hundreds of thousands of tiny little bumps. So that when you drop them into that soda pop and it, they sink down to the bottom, hundreds of thousands of bubbles grab onto the surface of the Mentos. Bubbles grab onto those bubbles, they grow, they explode, they, the pressure has to go somewhere, so it sends the soda flying out the mouth of the bottom. The reason the surface of the Mentos are like that, we got a chance to go to the factory in uh, Breda, I think, in, in, uh, in the Netherlands, where they, they make all of the Mentos <clears throat> for the world, essentially. And we found that what they do is at the very end of the process of making them, you'd think it'd be a simple candy, it's actually a fairly complicated process. At the very end of the process, they tumble them in these giant like rock tumblers, and they spray them with a mist of liquid sugar sort of like a fog, a little very fine spray of liquid sugar that hardens on them, and they do it again and again and again. They've got up to 40, 45 layers of that little mist, and that, we are pretty sure, is what makes the little tiny bumps on the Mentos that make them so good for this. Now, one of the other things we get asked is how many Mentos? Now, we're using five, but we didn't know that when we started. We experimented to see what was the optimal number, <clears throat> and we thought we'd save you guys the time, so we'll show you what happens when you drop one, five and then we have a big tube as well so this is one single mentos that looks like this three two one pull nice reaction arms up that was one this next bottle has the exact same setup the same type of nozzle and oh and this one has three in it and that looks like three two one pull Arms up! To be honest, I didn't see any difference in that one today. And this one goes to 11. There are 11 Mentos in this tube, and we'll see what this one does. Three, two, one, pull! Oh! Very surprising. <laughs> Arms up! I think, yeah, for instance, there's a couple of the Mentos jams. Sometimes what happens, even on in the show when we set all these off, some of the Mentos start to fall, and if the first one that falls in gets shot back up into the tube, it stops the reaction from popping out the tube. So sometimes it's sort of self-blocking. I think that's what happened there. 
Now, the other big question we get asked is, do you have to use diet soda pop? And the answer is no. You can use just about any fizzy beverage, including fizzy beverages made for adults. It does work with beer and with sparkling wine. In fact, the biggest geysers we've ever made were with a, a German sparkling wine called Zacht that has so much carbon dioxide in it that we got geysers 50% higher than anything we've ever seen. But there are two important reasons that we use Diet Coke, Coke Zero, uh, sodas like that. First, they do put more carbon dioxide in the diet sodas in general than in the regular ones. So we do get bigger geysers. We like that. But second, and most importantly, there is no sugar. Since we are about to get soaked to the skin for your amusement, we really appreciate that there's no sugar. No sugar, not sticky. So it's far less disgusting, basically, to get completely covered in this stuff. It's still messy, but not too bad. Now, if you're going to try this at home, and we know that you are, there's one more tip that we have for you. Use warm soda. This is a little surprising, and it took us an embarrassingly long time to figure out. We were doing our initial work that ended up with this crazy show you see. We were trying different nozzles and different experiments and trying different kinds of soda and different uh, candies even. And after a while, we figured out the right number of Mentos and the right kinds of uh, way to drop it. And everything was going great until about a month or two into our experiments. And we were working on it pretty much every weekend because uh, it was just such a weird, cool thing. And then our regular geysers started being pathetic and we couldn't figure out why. We were, we were doing these great fancy nozzles and the regular geysers were really pathetic. And we were seeing video of this nine-year-old in his driveway in Florida who was kicking our butt. And we couldn't figure out why and finally we realized, Florida. He's in Florida. We we're in Maine. <laughs> and it was March. And it was colder than even than it is today. <laughs> and once we realized that, we warmed up the soda and everything worked great. So here's an example of what... The, 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 one of these uh, is cold. It's been sitting in an ice chest for the last couple hours. The other one's been sitting out on the stage in the sun. And it's a little example of the difference that we were seeing in our geysers. One of these is Maine, basically, and one of these is Florida. <laughs> And we won't tell you which is which, see if you can tell. Everything is identical except the temperature. Three, two, one, pull. Wait. Arms up. That slow one, the only factor that's different is that it was cold. So when you use, when you do your own, make sure to use at least room temperature soda and you'll get really nice geysers. If you've got, uh, got your soda in the refrigerator, most of us keep our soda, and you want to do it and you don't have the patience to wait, just put it in, don't use the microwave, okay? <laughs> but just put it in your kitchen sink, fill it full of hot tap water, leave it there for five or 10 minutes and you'll be good to go. Absolutely. Now, um, we hope that you will visit our website. That is epbird.com, double E-P-Y-B-I-R-D, epbird.com. You'll find all of our crazy videos from uh, experiments with a quarter of a million sticky notes to a coke and mentos powered rocket car um to new new adventures with puppets and weird ways to tie your shoes all kinds of fun things that we've been experimenting with um importantly in a few minutes up on this stage there will be 108 bottles of coke zero um there will be about this much liquid left in each bottle it will be warm flat and have a slightly minty aftertaste and if you would like a souvenir of your time here at maker fair bay area i see some hands up already if you would like a souvenir of your time here at maker fair bay area if you'd like a souvenir of your time here at the evie bird coke and mentos show stick around give us a about four or five minutes after the show to get everything cleaned up a little bit we will come to the front of the stage we will give them out now there are slightly more than 108 of you here today but we will have 108 bottles to give away after the show in just a few minutes is there anything else are we good to go 
Are you guys ready? Yeah. You sound you sound a little bit excited, <laughs> particularly you guys right here. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Awesome. Let's make a really big mess. Awesome, awesome. Thank you guys so much for coming out to Maker Fair. We will be back tomorrow. We have one show tomorrow at 5 o'clock. Make sure to tell all of your friends. Once again, we are EP Bird. Thank you so much for coming out to Maker Fair Bay Area. You okay? Oh, my legs. Alright. Are you gonna get... Are you gonna get a bottle of...